welcome to episode 4 of the Children's History video podcast. Today we're going to be looking at something you've definitely seen before. Something that lots of you may be able to see around you right now. But more than that, we're going to be learning about the story behind it. And that is on November the 11th, Remembrance Day, where does wearing a poppy for remembrance come from? Here are our two key questions. Number one, who created the idea? And number two, should they be better known? At the end, we'll know the answer to the first question and you'll have some information to help you decide your answer for the second. This is what the poppy plant can look like. It has beautiful red petals and sometimes see the seeds are used in cookies. I add them to bread dough. Often, around this time of the year, we see paper poppies pinned onto hats, jumpers, coats and lots of other things. Where else have you seen them? Here's the first of our pause points. When you see this symbol, I'll be posing a couple of questions for you to discuss and answer, and then we'll carry on with the video. These are personal questions about your opinions, but other will ask for facts. But don't worry, I'll make sure I tell you which is which. Here are the questions. When you wear a poppy, what does it make you think? And how does it make you feel? So, pause the video, have a couple of minutes to discuss, and then we'll carry on. Okay, doke hopefully that was a good discussion. So why do we do it? Well, the money raised goes to the Royal British Legion, and you can see their emblem, their logo, on the right-hand side of the screen now. They're a charity that supports armed surfaces, personnel, and their families. That means people like soldiers or sailors in the Navy, etc. Volunteers sell the poppies to raise funds. Well, how is the money raised used? It supports the work of the charity, so all of those donations are really important because they allow people, allow the charity to continue to help people. The charity supports veterans and their families who are in need. When in history we're thinking about though, so as you can see on the screen, here is our timeline. It's going to allow us to put this knowledge into some kind of context. The green blocks represent the last century, that's a hundred years, and we call that living memory. And the blue blocks are further in the past, which is beyond living memory. Starting from now, let's travel back in time. There's now, right at the end. That's when the first television was invented, just towards the end of living memory. The first flight, that happened over a hundred years ago, so it's just beyond living memory. The first car doesn't look like one, but that's what it is. But today we're going to be focusing on this block of time here. And that's based around the First World War, which ran from 1914 to 1918. It involved countries from across the world and had a significant impact on the world during and after it ended. That's our focus. Let's start by thinking about what we already know about the First World War then. Which countries fought in it? Why was it called the World War? And did it impact where I live? Pause the video and see what you know. But don't worry, I'm going to give you some answers in a minute anyway. Okay, so the First World War. It was called a World War for a reason. On one side, we had the Triple Alliance. That included Germany, Austria-Hungary and Italy. And on the other was the Triple Entente. And that's a French word, a bit like a strong friendship, but similar to an alliance, which included the UK, France and Russia. Now, they also had empires, which meant other countries were brought in as well. It was the first industrialised total war. And it did include countries from across the world. For example, India, Australia... And America joined later as well, even though they weren't part of a wider empire. It probably did impact your area in some way, because men went off to fight. 
the home front also had restrictions introduced like rationing. And because men had gone off to fight, women took on new roles that they hadn't really done up to that point. Initially, we begin on the war-torn battlefields of Ypres in Belgium. This man, John McRae, wrote a poem called In Flanders Field. I wonder how many of you have heard of it. He was serving in Ypres, Belgium in the First World War. His poem was written in May 1915, a day after his best friend was buried. I can't imagine how he would have felt at that point. But how did it become something that we were? Well, that's where we meet this lady, Mina Michael. She was born August 15th, 1869, and died May 10th, 1944. She was an American professor and humanitarian. Now, a humanitarian is a person that wants to improve the lives or living conditions for people. Let's take a look at what she did in a little bit more detail. She wrote about what happened in her autobiography. You can see the front cover on the screen. Here's an extract. Look at the date. It's two days before the armistice was signed. No one would have known then that it was going to be signed in two days. Let's take it. Let's read it. November 9, 1918. A young soldier, the son of A.G. Nebel, placed a copy of the November Ladies Home Journal on my desk at headquarters. About 10.30 o'clock, when everyone else was on duty elsewhere, I found time to read it and discovered the marked page which carried Colonel John McCrae's poem, We Shall Not Sleep, later named In Flanders Field. It was vividly picturised, most strikingly illustrated in colour. She continued in her autobiography. This, for me, was a full spiritual experience. It seemed as though the silent voices again were vocal, whispering in sighs of anxiety unto anguish. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep. Though poppies grow in Flanders Field. It brought an incredibly strong emotional reaction, didn't it? Alone, again, in a high moment of white resolve, I pledge to keep the faith and always to wear a red poppy of Flanders Field as a sign of remembrance and the emblem of keeping the faith with all who died. She was inspired to wear a poppy from that day on. Her act would come to influence so many other people. She was given $10 as a thank you for her work at the conference. She wrote, how strange, I shall buy red poppies, 25 red poppies. I shall always wear red poppies, poppies of Flanders Field. Do you know why? Then I showed them the illustrated poem of Colonel John McRae. The committee, that's from the conference she was at, was duly impressed and requested the permission to take the material with them back to the conference room. She managed to find a large red poppy for her desk and 24 small silk poppies. As she was shopping for them, she told the lady at the till what she was going, what she was doing, and her bro and the lady replied her brother was sleeping among the poppies. Mina wrote, This personal contact with such a personal reaction further convinced me that this choice of a remembrance album for those sleeping in Flanders Field was no accident. The poem in Flanders Field by John McCrae really inspired Mina. Let's think about that in a bit more detail. To inspire means to fill someone with the urge or ability to do or feel something, especially to do something creative. I want you to take a bit of time and think about someone or something that inspires you then. Say who or what they are and why is having someone or something that inspires you a positive? Pause the video, do that now. How did it reach the UK then? 
Well, Miley campaigned to have the poppy adopted as an official symbol of remembrance across the USA and worked with others who wanted to do the same in Canada, Australia and the UK. It reached the UK thanks to the efforts of Anna Graham, who you can see pictured. She was in the UK in 1921 in order to sell poppies. There she met this man, Earl Haig. He's the founder of the Royal British Legion. Remember that? We spoke about them at the start. After this meeting, it was agreed the poppy would be become their emblem. From that year on, poppies have been sold for charity, and it's all thanks to John McRae's poem and Miner's actions at that conference. Their importance today, then. They raise money to help those former service people in need. They act as a symbol to help us reflect, think, and remember. There are now a number of poppies with different meanings. The purple poppy is worn to remember animals that have been the victims of war. The black poppy is worn to remember the contribution of black, African and Caribbean communities. The red poppy is worn to remember those who died in the First World War and wars that happened afterwards. And the white poppy is worn to remember those who died in conflict. That has a focus to end war. Take a moment to think. You can always rewind the video as well. Tell your partner something you didn't know about Poppy's Remembrance before today, but you do now. And pick a different colour of Poppy and tell someone why it's important to you. Pause the video, do that now. Let's finish by looking at our key questions for a final time. Number one, who created the idea? Well, as we now know, it came from a poem called In Flanders Field by Lieutenant Colonel John McRae. But the idea of wearing them as an act of remembrance came from that wonderful lady, Moina Michael. So we know the answer to that one. Question two, should Moina Michael be better known? Well, honestly, that's not for me to say. That's for each of us to decide for ourselves. So I'll leave you to think about that afterwards. Thank you so much for watching and listening. I hope you found it interesting and learned new things that you weren't aware of before. It'd be brilliant if you could give the video a like and even better if you could subscribe to the channel. Have a great day and I will talk to you again soon. Bye.